Today, I'll guide you through one of the most common routine tasks for a mechanic on a small vessel – preparing and starting up the main engine. Preparation process begins in the control room. By starting the main engine's electric oil pump, its role is to create a protective oil film across all internal engine components before ignition. Once the engine is running, the pump switches to standby mode, since the engine itself is equipped with a built-in mechanical pump to handle lubrication. The second step is to start both the main and standby oil pumps for the variable pitch propeller control system. On ships equipped with this system, the propeller rotates in a single direction at nearly constant speed, while the ship's thrust and direction are controlled by adjusting the propeller blade angles. The entire system is powered by hydraulic oil, allowing precise control over the blade position. Thus, while the ship is moving, one pump operates constantly to maintain hydraulic pressure, while the second remains in standby mode, ready to be activated if needed. And here is the lubrication oil pump of the main engine that I just started. The next step is to engage the engine turning device. This is a crucial part of the preparation before starting the engine, as it ensures more even lubrication of all components. If you take a closer look, you can see the device in motion turning the engine. This great device is a gearbox. It converts the flywheel input speed of 750 RPMs into approximately 160 RPMs to the propeller shaft and around 1500 RPMs for the shaft generator. The next step is to activate the electric oil pump for the gearbox. Once the engine starts and the gearbox is connected, this pump will automatically shut off and switch to standby mode, as the gearbox also contains a built-in mechanical pump to handle lubrication. Before proceeding to the next step, it's essential to wait for a while to allow the oil to circulate through the mechanisms. When the pre-lubrication process is complete, it's time to stop the turning device and disengage it from the engine's flywheel. Now it's necessary to blow through the engine cylinders. This step ensures that no cooling water has entered the cylinders due to a potential seal issue. Skipping this check could lead to a hydraulic lock and in the worst case, complete engine failure. Blowing through the cylinders is done using compressed air at around 25 bars, utilizing the same system employed to start the engine. For added safety, the cylinder perch valves remain open while the engine is stopped. During the blow-through process, we visually confirm that only clean air is expelled from the H cylinder. Once the check is complete, the purge valves can be closed. The number of purge valves matches the number of engine cylinders, in this case 8. These purge valves are also referred to as indicator valves because they serve a dual purpose. 
They are used to gauge combustion pressure within the running engine, providing critical insight into the engine's internal conditions. And that completes the preparation steps. The main engine is now ready to start up. The engine is running. Now I'll switch from local to remote control of the engine speed. On the way to control room I perform a visual inspection then take over the control from the engine control room. Next, the engine needs to be connected to the propeller shaft via the gearbox clutch discs and after that engine is gradually warmed up to the operating temperature by increasing the RPMs to the normal level. This warm-up process usually takes about 15 minutes, so I won't show it in detail. Afterwards, control can be handed over to the bridge and the vessel is ready for departure.